Welcome to another episode of Friday Night Frights, where shadows whisper and the unknown beckons. I am your guide, Night Angel, here to lead you through the hidden corridors of terror and wonder. Tonight, we delve into a tale that will chill your very soul. Tonight's tale, Feast of Shadows by Night Angel, set in a world shrouded in decay and darkness, this story challenges the very essence of our understanding of life and death. So, gather close, light your candles against the encroaching darkness, and prepare yourself for a journey into a place forgotten by time, where the feast awaits and the worm reigns supreme. Let us begin as we step into the shadows of a tale that will haunt your dreams. Are you ready, my friends? In the dusty corners of an old forgotten library, where the air is thick with the scent of ancient paper and secrets, our protagonist, a scholar of the arcane and the obscure, stumbles upon a manuscript unlike any other. Bound in leather that whispers of age, the manuscript beckons with a sinister allure. As he carefully turns the yellowed pages, his eyes catch on a particular entry, a map crudely drawn, yet unmistakably ominous in its detail. It depicts a land shadowed by myths and legends, a place where the earth itself seems to mourn. This forsaken location marked by an emblem of a worm entwined around a chalice, is said to house an ancient rite so horrifying that it has been erased from the conscious memory of mankind. Intrigued and unsettled, our protagonist feels the tendrils of obsession beginning to coil around his mind. The more he reads, the deeper his fascination grows. The manuscript speaks of a feast, not of joyous celebration, but of a macabre gathering in honor of decay and desolation, presided over by the enigmatic and monstrous worm. Compelled by a need to understand and witness the truth of these blasphemous claims, he decides that he must seek out this cursed place. The thought consumes him, each heartbeat echoing the ancient drum of a forgotten and dark ritual. What secrets do the shadows of this lost place hold? What horrors await the eye that dares to see and the mind that dares to understand? With the manuscript as his guide, our protagonist prepares for his journey into the unknown. He gathers his courage like a cloak around him, knowing well that the path he chooses may lead to enlightenment or madness. The descent into darkness begins not with a step, but with the will to uncover what should perhaps have remained hidden. As he leaves behind the safety of the known world, the air grows colder, the sky darker, and the weight of his quest heavier. He walks now, not just toward a physical location, but into the depths of his own soul, where fear resides and truth whispers from the shadows. Join us as we follow his footsteps into the abyss. What lies ahead is a journey of discovery, dread, and the undeniable pull of the uncanny. With the ancient manuscript tucked securely under his arm, our protagonist stands at the threshold of his quiet study, gazing out into the twilight that blankets his quaint village. The world beyond his door now seems a land of shadows and murmurs, where every leaf whisper and every wind's moan feels like a call to the depths of the unknown. As he steps forward, the first crunch of gravel underfoot marks the beginning of his quest. Each step takes him further from the warmth of hearth and home into the chilling embrace of the night. The path is not just untraveled but forgotten, a route erased by time and fear, 
now beckoned back into existence by his need to know, to see, to understand. What am I stepping into? Is the hunger for knowledge worth the price I might pay? These questions dance through his mind like the flickering shadows that accompany him on his path. Doubt claws at his resolve, yet the allure of the manuscript's secrets propels him forward, deeper into the heart of darkness. The journey is arduous. The farther he travels from civilization, the more alien the landscape appears. Ancient trees, like gnarled sentinels, watch his progress, their twisted limbs silhouetted against a moonlit sky. The air grows colder, the silence deeper, punctuated only by his own labored breaths and the steady beat of his heart, a reluctant drum heralding his approach to the unknown. There is a madness to this quest, a madness perhaps born of the very fear it seeks to conquer. But what if the legends are true? What if there truly is a feast that mocks the sanctity of life and death? As the rumored sight of the feast grows near, the air thickens with a sense of impending revelation, or doom. The manuscript, now heavy in his pocket, feels like a stone pulled from the very bed of sticks, a burden fraught with ominous potential. Our protagonist stands before the entrance, hewn into the rugged hillside, the opening yawns like the maw of some ancient beast. Tendrils of fog spill from the darkness, curling around his boots as if to pull him in. The manuscript spoke of such an entrance, a door to the underworld where the spirits feast. With trembling hands, he raises his lantern high, illuminating the damp, moss-covered walls that spiral downward into the abyss. The air is thick with an earthy scent, mingled with the faint, acrid odor of decay. He ventures further, the steady flicker of the lantern casting long shadows that leap and dance across the walls. What symbols are these? What tale do these markings tell? Strange symbols, weathered with age, adorn the walls like cryptic hieroglyphs of a forgotten language. Each step takes him closer to the heart of the chamber, and each echoing footfall amplifies the isolation pressing against his ears. The tunnel opens up into a vast, vaulted chamber. Here, in the dim light, he sees remnants of stone benches and a great slab, like an altar, scarred with grooves and stains. He circles the room, his lantern revealing crude carvings of grotesque figures writhing and feasting upon one another in macabre abandon. The whispers now swirl around him, their words indecipherable yet laced with malice. They ebb and flow with the breeze, merging with the sound of water dripping from the chamber's ceiling. The air thickens with dread, and his gaze lingers on the grooves and stains upon the altar. They speak of rituals performed under the shroud of secrecy, and of sacrifices made to unseen entities. The protagonist reaches for the manuscript, flipping through the fragile pages with a growing sense of urgency. His fingers tremble as he traces the ancient script. The words blur in his vision, but he understands their meaning, a dire warning etched by hands now long dead. The manuscript speaks of a feast, where the living and the dead commingle in the cold embrace of the house of the worm. Our protagonist, lantern held high and breath shallow, stumbles further into the chamber, drawn by a low, rhythmic chant that seems to thrum against the stone walls themselves. With each step, the air thickens with decay, and the light reveals a tableau so ghastly it could scarcely be believed. At the far end of the vaulted chamber, figures robed in shadow sway in grim unison around the altar. They chant in tongues lost to time, their voices rising and falling in dissonant waves. 
The protagonist grips the lantern tighter, his knuckles white, as he edges closer to glimpse the scene before him. The figures turn as one, their movements like the twisting of withered vines, revealing faces both ghostly pale and etched with sorrow. Their hollow eyes fix on the newcomer, lips curling back in smiles that mirror the joyless rictus of death. They part to reveal the altar where the feast has begun. Laid upon the stone slab, a banquet grotesque unfolds. Plates, brimming with writhing serpents and loathsome insects, are passed between the revelers, who partake with a frenzy that mocks any notion of humanity. They sip from tarnished goblets filled with thick, dark liquid, and their laughter rings hollow, echoing off the chamber walls. The protagonist stands transfixed, his mind reeling from the sheer depravity on display. He stumbles back as one reveler, face half obscured by the shadow of a rotted hood, offers him a goblet. It is then he sees the faces hidden beneath the hoods, the emaciated hollow visages of those long since perished. They are the shades of the damned, bound eternally to the feast in the house of the worm. Panic grips him as he recognizes the faces from the manuscript's faded pages. They are the same explorers who sought the chamber centuries before, their final act etched into eternity through their ceaseless revelry. He turns to flee but finds the stone doors sealed, trapping him within the infernal dining hall. The chants grow louder, the revelers encircle the altar, and the music weaves through the chamber like a serpent. The protagonist, now trembling, fights through the darkness toward the only hope for escape. Will he find salvation from this cursed feast, or has he already sealed his fate? Heart pounding, breath ragged, the protagonist stumbles back from the encroaching revelers. Their bony fingers reach out like gnarled roots, seeking to ensnare his limbs, but he twists free, pushing through the crowd toward the sealed stone doors. The darkness presses in, and he cannot ignore the stench of rot rising from the cursed congregation. The whispers grow louder, forming a terrible harmony that surrounds the protagonist, mocking his every step. As he edges closer to the exit, the figures grow agitated, their chanting becoming a cacophony of dissonant voices that rattle the chamber's very walls. The stone slab stands before him, the only barrier to salvation, but the carvings upon its surface seem to pulse with a dark energy. He pushes against it with all his might, yet it refuses to budge. Behind him, the shambling horde draws nearer, their whispers now a discordant wail. Desperate, he fumbles for the lantern hanging at his side. He casts its flickering light upon the chamber's walls revealing an intricate web of symbols inscribed in ancient languages. His eyes widen as he realizes the meaning of the markings. They are not just inscriptions, but a complex mechanism, an infernal puzzle. The chanting swells to a fever pitch as the protagonist frantically traces the symbols. One by one, he presses the carvings, the stone slab shuddering with each activation. With a final heave, the door grinds open, revealing a narrow passage to freedom. He flees into the darkness, his footsteps echoing as the whispers fade behind him. The corridor twists and turns like a labyrinth, the oppressive weight of the stone pressing down on him. The walls close in, and the shadows claw at his heels. At last... The corridor opens into the cold, open air. The protagonist stumbles into the night, collapsing on the dew-soaked grass. He gasps for breath, his eyes adjusting to the moonlight, as he turns to look back upon the mouth of the cave. He sees the ghostly silhouettes of the revelers, 
still chanting within the chamber. Though he is free, their shadows reach across the threshold, forever marking him with their darkness. Safe but shaken, the protagonist lies in the moonlit clearing, the chill of night air seeping through his coat. His breathing steadies, yet the images of that unholy feast remain vivid, burned into his mind like a ghostly brand. The grim faces, twisted in reverence to something beyond comprehension, are seared into his memory. He gazes up at the canopy of stars above, their serene light a stark contrast to the nightmare below. He begins to question the nature of reality itself. Is it possible that such malevolence, such unimaginable evil, can exist beyond the thin veil of darkness that separates day from night? Or was he simply driven mad by the twisted writings of that cursed manuscript? For hours he lies there, the murmur of the wind whispering through the trees. He longs to convince himself it was all a fevered dream, but the bruises on his limbs and the ragged state of his clothing remind him that the horror he witnessed was all too real. He rises unsteadily to his feet, casting one final glance at the mouth of the cave, as though expecting those ghostly figures to pursue him even here. The protagonist walks away, but the darkness of that chamber follows him, his thoughts linger on the wicked rituals hidden deep underground, and he knows that the mere knowledge of their existence has altered his soul. Forever changed, he vows to document his experiences, hoping that one day his warnings might save others from the same fate. As he begins his long journey home, he is left to contemplate how close humanity stands to the brink of madness when such things dwell beneath our feet. As our protagonist learned, some doors, once opened, reveal truths that cannot be unseen, knowledge that can change one's perception of reality forever. This story intertwines the allure of the unknown with the timeless warning that some mysteries are better left undisturbed. It challenges us to reflect on our own fascinations with the dark unknowns of the world, and possibly to heed the cautionary tales of those who dared to look too deeply. If tonight's story has stirred the shadows of your own thoughts, or if you dare to share your reflections on the mysteries unveiled, we invite you to join the conversation. Comment below with your insights, Engage with fellow seekers of the unknown, and perhaps together we can unravel more of the mysteries that await in the darkness. Do not forget to subscribe to It Gets Creepy and hit the notification bell. Each week, Friday Night Frights promises new tales of the eerie and the unexplainable, each designed to challenge your reality and explore the darkest corners of the human psyche. Until we meet again, under the dim light of the next full moon, keep the lantern close and the shadows at bay. Good night, and remember, some mysteries are eternal, and some feasts are better left unfound. <laughs>